phone's beeping. Buffalo, New York. Hey. <laughs> Hello, you're on the book report. <laughs> hey, everybody. I am Michael. And I'm Janet. And welcome to the book report presented by The Millions. How are you doing, Janet? I'm great. You look very festive over there. Very festive. Thanksgiving is over, so it's Christmas time. Please note uh, that Mike has a, a cowboy hat on top of his Christmas tree. This episode, of course, uh, we're going to be talking about books that we have read. I recently read God Will Cut You Down by John Safran. It's a true crime tale of um, a white supremacist in Mississippi named Richard Barrett who was murdered by a young black man. Richard would hire Vincent McGee, his young neighbor, to do like yard work and um, kind of manual labor. And then one night, Vincent McGee stabbed him with a kitchen knife many, many times. John Safran is an Australian documentarian. He had met Richard Barrett before um, when he made a documentary about like the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Um, and so then when he found out that Richard Barrett had been murdered, he decided to come and find out all about it. The guilt of Vincent McGee is never in question. Like, he confessed. They found him right away, and he definitely did it. Like, the mm. case is open and shut. There are rumors of a sexual relationship between the two. There's hints that Richard Barrett is not necessarily a white supremacist so much as just likes being at the center of attention and found a good way to do that in Mississippi. So it becomes a very tangled case. John Safran is in over his head on two different fronts. Like one, he's writing about crime for the first time and sort of figuring out the ethics of that as he goes along. Yeah. And two, he's in the deep south investigating a racially charged murder. It was so interesting for me to see somebody not from America, try to understand Mississippi. Yeah. Because, it, it, I mean, I don't understand Mississippi. As the book goes on, he starts to have a lot of self-doubt about whether or not he's going about the project in the right way. He talks a lot about the Janet Malcolm book, Journalist and the Murderer, where she uh, criticizes someone who wrote a true crime book as having been too manipulative. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about Truman Capote, and because at one point when he finally gets to make contact with Vincent McGee, the, the murderer, um, he'll only talk to him if he gives him Walmart gift cards that he can use in jail. So Jan, John Saffron ends up giving this guy a lot of money <laughs> just to oh, yeah. on the wow. phone. And I mean, I think he includes it because he's like, full disclosure, what on earth am I doing? It's interesting to watch him go on this journey that seems to have really taken over his life and um, like gripped him in ways he didn't anticipate. Absolutely, yeah. And there's no, pictures. That sounds good. And, special announcement, John Safran will be a guest on this here book report uh, in January. What have you been reading this holiday season? I read a book upon one of my favorites for many years called Let Evening Come by Jane Kenyon. This was, uh, yeah, her third book of poetry. It's, uh, like a lot of her work, is about uh, nature and God and animals and death. And for some reason, I read this every Christmas. She was the, uh, at the time of her death, she was a New Hampshire State Poet Laureate. She was married to uh, Donald Hall, who is also a great New Hampshire poet. And this, uh, this book, Let Evening Come, is a lot of just about, uh, kind of like the title suggests, like there are going to be tough things and unfair things in the world. And you kind of just have no choice but to go with it, you know? And, and it's going to happen whether you like it or not. Her poetry is a lot uh, in common to me with hymns, you know? I, uh, I, I grew up Catholic, so we didn't really have like the great you know, hymns that the, uh, the Protestant religious did, but the, uh, but they're almost like these, uh, these little prayers almost, you know, and it's just incredibly inspiring. The title poem is Let Evening Come is possibly her most famous poem. It's a great poem. Uh, the last stanza is let it come as it will and don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless. So let evening come. Let evening come, I think is, is, yeah, basically kind of a response to the, you know, rage, rage, against the dying of the light. Yeah. 
Uh, which, in which, to be honest, you know, I, I liked Dilettante, so okay, that poem never really, the Do Not Go Gentle, like, really moved me, it, you know, and I always kind of, you know, thought, oh, yeah, easy for you to say, Dylan, you know, <laughs> like, it's... I do not recommend the movie Interstellar in that case, Mike. Uh-oh. Interstellar? <laughs> yeah, they think- quote, they quote that poem maybe three or four different times uh, throughout the film. Wow. Is it is that any good? The movie? I've heard good things. <laughs> we'll see you next week. You'll never walk alone, Mike. You will also never walk alone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. See you next week. Interstellar is like if Armageddon got an MFA. That's good. And then was like, oh, oh. like <laughs> do not go gentle into that guy.